If you are pained by any external thing, it is not this thing that disturbs you, but your own judgment about it. And it is in your power to wipe out this judgment now. No great thing is created suddenly, any more than a bunch of grapes or a figure. If you tell me that you desire a fig, I answer that there must be time. Let it first blossom, then bear fruit, then ripen. I have to die. If it is now, well then I die now, if later, then now I will take my lunch, since the hour for lunch has arrived, and dying I will tend to later. It never ceases to amaze me, we all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinion than our own. Complaining does not work as a strategy. We all have finite time and energy. Any time we spend whining is unlikely to help us achieve our goals and it won't make us happier. What man actually needs is not a tensionless state but rather the striving and struggling for some goal worthy of him. Love sometimes injures. Friendship always benefits, after friendship is formed you must trust, but before that you must judge. What man actually needs is not a tensionless state but rather the striving and struggling for some goal worthy of him. It is not the man who has too little that is poor, but the one who hankers after more. A Stoic is someone who transforms fear into prudence, pain into transformation, mistakes into initiation, and desire into undertaking. In life, it doesn't matter what happens to you or where you came from. It matters what you do with what happens and what you've been given. Be so busy building your own life that other people's bullshit is of no concern. For those who follow nature, everything is easy and straightforward, whereas for those who fight against her life is just like rowing against the stream. For those who follow nature, everything is easy and straightforward, whereas for those who fight against her life is just like rowing against the stream. Many are the things that have caused terror during the night and been turned into matters of laughter with the coming of daylight. You have two essential tasks in life to be a good person and to pursue the occupation that you love. Everything else is a waste of energy and a squandering of your potential. When pain comes, it must not derail you from your set virtues. If it does, you have failed to practice your virtues by going with the hype of pain. For I am not everlasting, but a human being, a part of the whole as an hour is a part of the day. Like an hour I must come, and like an hour pass away. There is only one way to happiness and that is to cease worrying about things which are beyond the power of our will.
just as the earth that bears the man who tills and digs it, to bear those who speak ill of them, is a quality of the highest respect. Sick and yet happy, in peril and yet happy, dying and yet happy, in exile and happy, in disgrace and happy. Whatever happens to you has been waiting to happen since the beginning of time. The twining strands of fate wove both of them together. In each action that you undertake, consider what comes before and what follows after, and only then proceed to the action itself. Understand at last that you have something in you more powerful and divine than what causes the bodily passions and pulls you like a mere puppet. Belief in God and a future life makes it possible to go through life with less of stoic courage than is needed by skeptics. It made Costis wonder for the first time just how much the stoic man really wants to hide when he unsuccessfully pretends not to be in pain. You've got to figure out what works best for you. That's the hard part. I know I can't play as stoic as Hogan, and I can't talk as much as Trevino. You have to be your own person. I'm a really stoic artist. I'm serious a lot of times. I can joke and play sometimes, but most of the time, I'm stoic. An aristocratic culture does not advertise its emotions. In its forms of expression it is sober and reserved. Its general attitude is stoic. Stoicism is of no use to me whatsoever. What I'm a big believer in is talking about everything until you're blue in the face. With patience and calm, persistence and stoicism, good handwriting, and careful labeling, they would meet persecution, indignity, and hardship head-on. The basic philosophy of stoicism is that you have nothing real external to your own consciousness, that the only thing real is in fact your consciousness. Stoicism and silence does not serve us nor our communities, only the forces of things as they are. Being a stoic does not mean being a robot. Being a stoic means remaining calm both at the height of pleasure and the depths of misery. How much more harmful are the consequences of anger and grief than the circumstances that arouse them in us? Belief in God and a future life makes it possible to go through life with less of stoic courage than is needed by skeptics. Understand at last that you have something in you more powerful and divine than what causes the bodily passions and pulls you like a mere puppet. Whatever happens to you has been waiting to happen since the beginning of time. The twining strands of fate wove both of them together. In each action that you undertake, Consider what comes before and what follows after, and only then proceed to the action itself. 
It would be foolish to be stoical all the time, you'd wear yourself out for nothing. Just as the earth that bears the man who tills and digs it, to bear those who speak ill of them, is a quality of the highest respect. And if you want to know why all this running away cannot help you, the answer is simply this, you are running away in your own company. You have two essential tasks in life, to be a good person and to pursue the occupation that you love. Everything else is a waste of energy and a squandering of your potential. Change, nothing inherently bad in the process, nothing inherently good in the result. When pain comes, it must not derail you from your set virtues. If it does, you have failed to practice your virtues by going with the hype of pain. The most common act of violence is the relentless mental violence we perpetrate upon ourselves with nothing other than our thoughts. Many are the things that have caused terror during the night and been turned into matters of laughter with the coming of daylight. For those who follow nature, everything is easy and straightforward, whereas for those who fight against her life is just like rowing against the stream. In order to protect ourselves, we must live like doctors and be continually treating ourselves with reason. Common man's patience will bring him more happiness than common man's power. In life, it doesn't matter what happens to you or where you came from. It matters what you do with what happens and what you've been given. Keep your intention pure. Emotions will try to distract you. So keep going. That's the cure. A stoic is someone who transforms fear into prudence pain into transformation, mistakes into initiation, and desire into undertaking. What man actually needs is not a tensionless state but rather the striving and struggling for some goal worthy of him. It is not the man who has too little that is poor, but the one who hankers after more. He who fears death will never do anything worth of a man who is alive. Life is very short and anxious for those who forget the past, neglect the present, and fear the future. Imagine smiling after a slap in the face. Then think of doing it 24 hours a day. Man is mostly a collection of emotions, most of which you would do better not to be feeling. Love sometimes injures. Friendship always benefits. After friendship is formed you must trust, but before that you must judge. Complaining does not work as a strategy. We all have finite time and energy. Any time we spend whining is unlikely to help us achieve our goals. And it won't make us happier. 
It never ceases to amaze me. We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinion than our own. I have to die. If it is now, well then I die now, if later, then now I will take my lunch, since the hour for lunch has arrived, and dying I will tend to later. No great thing is created suddenly, any more than a bunch of grapes or a figure. If you tell me that you desire a fig, I answer that there must be time. Let it first blossom, then bear fruit, then ripen. Look back over the past, with its changing empires that rose and fell, and you can foresee the future too. We should not, like sheep, follow the herd of creatures in front of us, making our way where others go, not where we ought to go. If you are pained by any external thing, it is not this thing that disturbs you, but your own judgment about it. And it is in your power to wipe out this judgment now. We are more often frightened than hurt, and we suffer more in imagination than in reality. Choose not to be harmed, and you won't feel harmed. Don't feel harmed, and you haven't been. We should always be asking ourselves, is this something that is, or is not, in my control? If you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it, and this you have the power to revoke at any moment. If you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it, and this you have the power to revoke at any moment. Whatever happens to you has been waiting to happen since the beginning of time. The twining strands of fate wove both of them together. The tranquility that comes when you stop caring what they say, or think, or do. Only what you do. Not to be distracted by their darkness, to run straight for the finish line, unswerving. It's time you realize that you have something in you more powerful and miraculous than the things that affect you and make you dance like a puppet. If you are pained by any external thing, it is not this thing that disturbs you, but your own judgment about it. And it is in your power to wipe out this judgment now. In each action that you undertake, consider what comes before and what follows after, and only then proceed to the action itself. The chief task in life is simply this, to identify in separate matters so that I can say clearly to myself which are externals not under my control, and which have to do with the choices I actually control. Where then do I look for good and evil? Not to uncontrollable externals, but within myself to the choices that are my own. When someone is properly grounded in life, they shouldn't have to look outside themselves for approval.
It's something like going on an ocean voyage. What can I do? Pick the captain, the boat, the date, and the best time to sail. But then a storm hits, what are my options? I do the only thing I am in a position to do, drown, but fearlessly, without bawling or crying out to God, because I know that what is born must also die. Don't seek for everything to happen as you wish it would, but rather wish that everything happens as it actually will, then your life will flow well. But for me every omen is favorable for I want it to be so, for whatever may come about, it is within my power to derive benefit from it. Let us meet with bravery whatever may befall us. Let us never feel a shudder at the thought of being wounded or of being made a prisoner, or of poverty or persecution. No person has the power to have everything they want, but it is in their power not to want what they don't have, and to cheerfully put to good use what they do have. Floods will rob us of one thing, fire of another. These are conditions of our existence which we cannot change. What we can do is adopt a noble spirit, such a spirit that befits a good person, so that we may bear up bravely under all that fortune sends us and bring our wills into tune with nature's. The sun appears to pour itself down, and indeed its light pours in all direction, but the stream does not run out. This pouring is linear extension, that is why its beams are called rays, because they radiate in extended lines. You can see what a ray is if you observe the sun's light entering a dark room through a narrow opening. It extends in a straight line and impacts, so to speak, on any solid body in its path which blocks passage through the air on the other side. It to the wise. Peace of mind is the result of being fine with how things are, to the foolish, the result of things being fine. For in this case, we are not to give credit to the many, who say, that none ought to be educated but the free, but rather to the philosophers, who say, that the well-educated alone are free. I've come to the point where I never feel the need to stop and evaluate whether or not I am happy. I'm just a being, and without question, by default, it works. Nothing, to my way of thinking, is a better proof of a well-ordered mind than a man's ability to stop just where he is and pass some time in his own company. Concern should drive us into action and not into a depression. No man is free who cannot control himself. It is quite possible to be a good man without anyone realizing it.
Philosophy does not promise to secure anything external for man, otherwise it would be admitting something that lies beyond its proper subject matter. For as the material of the carpenter is wood, and that of statuary bronze, so the subject matter of the art of living is each person's own life. When a dog is tied to a cart, if it wants to follow, it is pulled and follows, making its spontaneous act coincide with necessity. But if the dog does not follow, it will be compelled in any case. So it is with men too, even if they don't want to, they will be compelled to follow what is destined. Thoroughly convinced of the impossibility of his own suit, a high resolve constrained him not to injure that of another. This is a lover's most stoical virtue, as the lack of it is a lover's most venial sin. Remember that all we have is, on loan from fortune, which can reclaim it without our permission, indeed, without even advance notice. Thus, we should love all our dear ones, but always with the thought that we have no promise that we may keep them forever, nay, no promise even that we may keep them for long. In your actions, don't procrastinate. In your conversations, don't confuse. In your thoughts, don't wander. In your soul, don't be passive or aggressive. In your life, don't be all about business. You need to avoid certain things in your train of thought, everything random, everything irrelevant, and certainly everything self-important or malicious. You need to get used to winnowing your thoughts, so that if someone says, what are you thinking about, you can respond at once, and truthfully, that you are thinking this or thinking that. If what you have seems insufficient to you, then though you possess the world, you will yet be miserable. Today I escaped anxiety. Or no, I discarded it, because it was within me, in my own perceptions, not outside. Remember two things, i. that everything has always been the same, and keeps recurring, and it makes no difference whether you see the same things recur in a hundred years or two hundred, or in an infinite period, two. That the longest lived and those who will die soonest lose the same thing. The present is all that they can give up, since that is all you have, and what you do not have you cannot lose. Stop wandering about. You aren't likely to read your own notebooks, 
or ancient histories, or the anthologies you've collected to enjoy in your old age. Get busy with life's purpose, toss aside empty hopes, get active in your own rescue if you care for yourself at all and do it while you can. I have always swung back and forth between alienation and relatedness. As a child, I would run away from the beatings, from the obscene words, and always knew that if I could run far enough, then any leaf, any insect, any bird, any breeze could bring me to my true home. I knew I did not belong among people. Whatever they hated about me was a human thing, the non-human world has always loved me. I can't remember when it was otherwise. But I have been emotionally crippled by this. There is nothing romantic about being young and angry, or even about turning that anger into art. I go through the motions of living in society, but never feel a part of it. When my family threw me away, every human on earth did likewise. In life our first job is this, to divide and distinguish things into two categories, externals that I cannot control, but the choices I make with regard to them I do control. Where will I find food and bad? In me, in my choices. Don't let the force of an impression when it first hits you knock you off your feet. Just say to it, hold on a moment, let me see who you are and what you represent. Let me put you to the test. You never know what will be the consequence of misfortune, or you never know what will be the consequences of good fortune. You are scared of dying, and, tell me, is the kind of life you lead really any different from being dead? Associate with those who will make a better of man. Welcome those whom yourself can improve. Men learn while they teach. Life is a series of problems we must navigate with grace. One problem solved, another arises, again and again until we die. If you are told that such an one speaks ill of you, make no defense against what was said, but answer, he surely knew not my other faults, else he would not have mentioned these only. Man, consider first what the matter is, which you propose to do than your own nature also, what it is able to bear. If you are a wrestler, look at your shoulders, your thighs, your loins, for different men are naturally formed for different things. Employers pay with their money for what employees have paid for with portions of their lives.
It is better to be despised for simplicity than to suffer agonies from everlasting pretense. Sometimes silence is a sign, not of not knowing what to say, but of knowing when to say what you know. The sun appears to pour itself down, and indeed its light pours in all direction, but the stream does not run out. This pouring is linear extension, that is why its beams are called rays, because they radiate in extended lines. You can see what a ray is if you observe the sun's light entering a dark room through a narrow opening. It extends in a straight line and impacts, so to speak, on any solid body in its path which blocks passage through the air on the other side, it settles there and does not slip off or fall. To the wise, peace of mind is the result of being fine with how things are, to the foolish, the result of things being fine. For in this case, we are not to give credit to the many, who say, that none ought to be educated but the free, but rather to the philosophers, who say, that the well-educated alone are free. I've come to the point where I never feel the need to stop and evaluate whether or not I am happy. I'm just a being, and without question, by default, it works. Nothing, to my way of thinking, is a better proof of a well-ordered mind than a man's ability to stop just where he is and pass some time in his own company. It is not the man who has too little that is poor, but the one who hankers after more. There will never come a time when I will be able to resist my emotions. I hear my silence talked of in every lane. The suppression of a cry is itself a cry of pain. Life is such unutterable hell, solely because it is sometimes beautiful. If we could only be miserable all the time, if there could be no such things as love or beauty or faith or hope, if I could be absolutely certain that my love would never be returned, how much more simple life would be. One could plod through the Siberian salt mines of existence without being bothered about happiness. Think of your many years of procrastination, how the gods have repeatedly granted you further periods of grace, of which you have taken no advantage. It is time now to realize the nature of the universe to which you belong, and of the controlling power whose offspring you are, and to understand that your time has a limit set to it. Use it, then, to advance your enlightenment, or it will be gone, and never in your power again. Nothing is burdensome if taken lightly, and nothing need arouse one's irritation so long as one doesn't make it bigger than it is by getting irritated. You should. Live in such a way that there is nothing which you could not as easily tell your enemy as keep to yourself.
What really frightens and dismays us is not external events themselves, but the way in which we think about them. It is not things that disturb us, but our interpretation of their significance. Limiting one's desires actually helps to cure one of fear. Cease to hope, and you will cease to fear. Widely different, as fear and hope are, the two of them march in unison like a prisoner and the escort he is handcuffed to. Fear keeps pace with hope, both belong to a mind in suspense, to a mind in a state of anxiety through looking into the future. Both are mainly due to projecting our thoughts far ahead of us instead of adapting ourselves to the present. Always resignation and acceptance. Always prudence and honor and duty. Eleanor, where is your heart? For what prevents us from saying that the happy life is to have a mind that is free, lofty, fearless and steadfast, a mind that is placed beyond the reach of fear, beyond the reach of desire, that counts virtue the only good, baseness the only evil, and all else but a worthless mass of things, which come and go without increasing or diminishing the highest good, and neither subtract any part from the happy life nor add any part to it. A man thus grounded must, whether he wills or not, necessarily be attended by constant cheerfulness and a joy that is deep and issues from deep within, since he finds delight in his own resources, and desires no joys greater than his inner joys. What do you know of my heart? What do you know of anything but your own suffering? For weeks, Mary Ann, I've had this pressing on me without being at liberty to speak of it to a single creature. It was forced on me by the very person whose prior claims ruined all my hope. I have endured her exaltations again and again whilst knowing myself to be divided from Edward forever. Believe me, Mary Ann, had I not been bound to silence I could have provided proof enough of a broken heart, even for you. Why should we place Christ at the top and summit of the human race? Was he kinder, more forgiving, more self-sacrificing than Buddha? Was he wiser, did he meet death with more perfect calmness, than Socrates? Was he more patient, more charitable, than Epictetus? Was he a greater philosopher, a deeper thinker, than Epicurus? In what respect was he the superior of Zoroaster? Was he gentler than Lao Tse, more universal than Confucius? Were his ideas of human rights and duty superior to those of Zeno? Did he express grander truths than Cicero? Was his mind subtler than Spinoza's? Was his brain equal to Kepler's or Newton's? Was he grander in death, a sublimer martyr than Bruno? Was he in intelligence, in the force and beauty of expression, in breadth and scope of thought, in wealth of illustration, in aptness of comparison, in knowledge of the human brain and heart, of all passions, hopes and fears, the equal of Shakespeare, the greatest of the human race? A Stoic is someone who transforms fear into prudence, pain into transformation, mistakes into initiation, and desire into undertaking. P. 
people hide their truest nature. I understood that, I even applauded it. What sort of world would it be if people bled all over the sidewalks, if they wept under trees, smacked whomever they despised, kissed strangers, revealed themselves? Life is such unutterable hell, solely because it is sometimes beautiful. If we could only be miserable all the time, if there could be no such things as love or beauty or faith or hope, if I could be absolutely certain that my love would never be returned, how much more simple life would be. One could plod through the Siberian salt mines of existence without being bothered about happiness. Unfortunately, the happiness is there. There is always the chance, about 850 to 1, that another heart will come to mine. I can't help hoping, and keeping faith, and loving beauty. Quite frequently I am not so miserable as it would be wise to be. Until we have begun to go without them, we fail to realize how unnecessary many things are. We've been using them not because we needed them but because we had them. Complaining does not work as a strategy. We all have finite time and energy. Any time we spend whining is unlikely to help us achieve our goals. And it won't make us happier. Never let the future disturb you. You will meet it, if you have to, with the same weapons of reason which today arm you against the present. If you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it, and this you have the power to revoke at any moment. Imagine smiling after a slap in the face. Then think of doing it 24 hours a day. Seek not that the things which happen should happen as you wish, but wish the things which happen to be as they are, and you will have a tranquil flow of life. He is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he has not, but rejoices for those which he has. True happiness is to enjoy the present, without anxious dependence upon the future. A gem cannot be polished without friction nor a man perfected without trials. The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. Happiness and freedom begin with a clear understanding of one principle. Some things are within our control, and some things are not. The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. It is not death or pain that is to be dreaded, but the fear of pain or death. As long as you live, keep learning how to live. Do every act of your life as if it were your last. When someone is properly grounded in life, they shouldn't have to look outside themselves for approval.
Very little is needed to make a happy life, it is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. Most powerful is he who has himself in his own power. Remember that you are an actor in a play of such a kind as the playwright chooses, short if he wants it short, long if he wants it long. If he wants you to play the part of a beggar, play even this part well, and so also for the parts of a disabled person, an administrator, or a private individual. For this is your business, to play well the part you are given, but choosing it belongs to another. The greatest blessings of mankind are within us and within our reach. A wise man is content with his lot, whatever it may be, without wishing for what he has not. He who laughs at himself never runs out of things to laugh at. Difficulties show men what they are. In case of any difficulty, remember that God has pitted you against a rough antagonist that you may be a conqueror, and this cannot be without toil. It is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. Life is long enough, and a sufficient generous amount has been given to us for the highest achievements if it were all well invested. But when it is wasted in heedless luxury and spent on no good activity, we are forced at last by death's final constraint to realize that it has passed away before we know it was passing. A man asked me to write to Rome on his behalf who, as most people thought, had met with misfortune. For having been before wealthy and distinguished, he had afterwards lost all and was living here. So I wrote about him in a humble style. He however on reading the letter returned it to me, with the words, I asked for your help, not for your pity. No evil has happened unto me. True instruction is this, to learn to wish that each thing should come to pass as it does. And how does it come to pass? As the disposer has disposed it. Now he has disposed that there should be summer and winter, and plenty and dearth, and vice and virtue, and all such opposites, for the harmony of the whole. Will you never come to a realization of who you are, what you have been born for and the purpose for which the gift of vision was made in our case? The best way to have people laugh with you and not at you, is to get ahead of them and laugh at yourself first. Don't take things too personally. Critique, failures, unwarranted advice, take it to mind, not to heart. What you hear out of the mouths of others are opinions and perspectives. It's often worth listening to opinions and perspectives, but it's not a requisite that you take them on board. There was an iron simplicity in the seer. He was like a monolith of logic standing against waves of angry nonsense. Reflect that nothing merits admiration except the spirit, 
the impressiveness of which prevents it from being impressed by anything. As for us, we face things that are not nearly as intimidating, and then we promptly decide we're screwed. This is how obstacles become obstacles. In other words, through our perception of events, we are complicit in the creation as well as the destruction of every one of our obstacles. There is no good or bad without us, there is only perception. There is the event itself and the story we tell ourselves about what it means. We need to set our affections on some good man and keep him constantly before our eyes, so that we may live as if he were watching us and do everything as if he saw what we were doing. Everything that we see is changing and will soon be gone, and we should bear in mind how many things have already changed over time, like the waters of streams flowing ceaselessly past, an idea that we can call the contemplation of impermanence. Consider above all else whether you've advanced in philosophy or just in actual years. It's only when you're breathing your last that the way you've spent your time will become apparent, I accept the terms, and feel no dread of the coming judgment. So, to the best of your ability, demonstrate your own guilt, conduct inquiries of your own into all the evidence against yourself. Play the part first of prosecutor, then of judge, and finally of pleader in mitigation. Be harsh with yourself at times. Show me one who is sick and yet happy, in peril and yet happy, dying and yet happy, in exile and happy, in disgrace and happy. Show him me. By the gods I would fain see a Stoic. Nay you cannot show me a finished Stoic, then show me one in the molding, one who has set his feet on the path. Well, when do we act like sheep, when we act for the sake of the belly, or of our sex organs, or at random, or in a filthy fashion, or without due consideration, to what level have we degenerated? To the level of sheep. Paying someone to do something on our behalf is the closest we can get to buying time. Cecilia, the youngest, only 13, had gone first, slitting her wrists like a stoic while taking a bath, and when they found her, afloat in her pink pool, with the yellow eyes of someone possessed and her small body giving off the odor of a mature woman, the paramedics had been so frightened by her tranquility that they had stood mesmerized. Life is not more kind, or less cruel, towards those who take it seriously. An apology is usually a disguised request for a key to the cage of guilt or regret.
An apology is usually a disguised request for a key to the cage of guilt or regret. Most people would rather have their remarks be misunderstood than be disagreed with. In a little while you too will close your eyes, and soon there will